Hello, this video is to think about restringing, when a piano needs restringing or not, um, and etc. So we'll look at some pianos, starting at this one, which is a Blutner Grand piano in our main shop. And the uh, question's arisen because uh, the client's asked about restringing and whether it needs it. And the first question to look at, how tight are the tuning pins? That's the very first thing we want to know. If the tuning pins are loose, then straight away we're thinking about restringing because you'll need new tuning pins and therefore we put new strings. You can replace the tuning pins without doing that if the strings are really good, but it's not something we normally do. And then we listen to the tone of the strings. And this one is, has a typically lush tone. Um, we're expecting a Blutner, this is a Style 8 Blutner, to have a lush tone. Um, we've sold uh, probably about over 50 Blutner Grands, certainly, and uh, probably 20 or 25 of this model of piano, so we're quite, quite used to them, and uh, they all vary, obviously. Now, the piano's been very well restored in the past, possibly by Blutner themselves. The badge here, which is on here, the piano's 1899, and the badge date is up to 1929. That's typical that Blutner would put that one on. Um, we try and source the original badge, but sometimes they're not available, so I'm not blaming them for that. But it's a sign that it could well be done by them. Um, and the soundboard's perfect, so those are two reasons we don't need to restring. Tuning pins are tight. Normally, in fact, it's the hammers that you need changing. That's been covered in other videos, so you'll find plenty about that. It's normally hammers are what wears more than anything. But this has got a lush tone throughout. There's an Alicot scaling uh, piano, so it's got the extra string, um, which is uh, the, the top model, really. And it's strong right up to the top, so it doesn't need new hammers. And we've looked, uh, there's another video about this piano as well. Uh, so we'll look at other pianos and uh, ask the same question. This is a brand new Foric piano, it's shorter, so obviously you won't expect the bass to be as good. Um, and it, this is a very well made piano, this is one of our preferred makes of new piano. And the strings are very well matched to the piano, very well designed, a lot of thought gone into them. Uh, but you will find some pianos, even if they're new, the strings are not, not that wonderful. In this case they are. But back to the Blute now. We see richer, well it's, it's about a foot longer, the strings are about a foot longer, so you'd expect that. And they're as good as you can get, that's exactly what I'd expect for a blue, they're very consistently warm. Here's a Bechstein Model 5, one that we love restoring, and the slightly longer strings again than the Blutner, so you can expect a rich, warm sound for those. That's, that's bottom C, let's listen to the Blutner. It's richer really, well it's a Blutner, so you'd expect that. And here's a very nice Yamaha G3, about 1984. Same, I think the strings are about the same age as the, the Blutner. Possibly the Blutner's 10 years older strings, but um, from experience, uh, strings of this age, they never break on a good piano. So back to the Blutner. Once the piano's been restrung and well restrung, you'd expect these strings to last for another 50 years at least, and uh, certainly have never had any problems with the ones we've sold. So we're trying to source pianos, especially Blutners, that have been well restored by somebody else, and ideally Blutner, who do them really, really well. Um, and that means they're going to be sold for about two-thirds of the prices if we had to do it all ourselves. So now we're in our workshop area. We have three Steinway Grands, Model O's. That's uh, the first one in black, and that's been fully restored, including restrung. And next we have a, a Rosewood Model O. Um, both these pianos are um, in the early 1900s. This one's 1904, as you can read on the back of the frame here. A lot of Steinways have the date on the back of the frame. And then we have this Rosewood Model O, made in 1922 and restored by Steinway, apparently. Now, obviously, as soon as you hear that, you think it's going to be done well. And indeed, it has been done well, though I have no paperwork to prove it's done by Steinway, but certainly it's very well done. Uh, again, t tightness of tuning pins is really important. And then uh, the soundboard doesn't need restoring, it's obviously been done. Um, and uh, it does have some trademarks of Steinway, this piano, so I think it probably was. There's another video of the piano, obviously. Um, but these strings, uh, we, we don't need to replace them. And generally speaking, if no strings are broken, and if no strings are broken in the past, and the tuning pins are tight, the down bearing, that's the, the tone rounds here, is nice and full. Um, and uh, there's nothing else wrong with the piano, uh, then there's no point in restringing it. Um, you won't add that much to this piano restringing at all, possibly in the bass, let's have a listen. Possibly in the bass. 
possibly five, ten percent. I doubt that. And then if the, you do do the bass, you've got to match the treble, and the treble's lovely. So we try and source these pianos that we don't have to fully restore ourselves. Compared to the ones, just focus back on on that one. This rosewood here, you see, we have to done everything. Uh, we've done rest playing, everything you can possibly do to a piano. So it's much more expensive than the other one. Um, so the idea of um, not having to do it is either because it already sounds good and you might actually not improve it at all, or um, because you want a piano that costs less money and you won't have to pay so much for it. They might wonder, how long do strings last? Well, these, this is a Steinway Upright. Uh, just coming to stock, actually. The hammers need changing, they're quite soft, but the strings here, again, tuning pins very tight, and the strings just beautiful. Even the break point here, we listen to it. The hammers are letting it down, basically. But they're right throughout, all the tuning pins tight, and although it's like cosmetically work to do, it's slightly dirty, but the hammers need changing definitely so usually it's the hammers that we need to think of first as long as all the strings are there as long as the tuning pins are tight and as long as the down bearing is good so that's a brief video on um, whether you need to restring or not thank you very much for listening I just postscript here uh, I forgot to mention that this Bex time which is in stock and I've got a video on this too that um, it needs re repinning basically the strings are in good condition there's no missing again so uh, I was saying earlier if there's none missing that's a good reason for not restringing you're not likely to get any breaking um, as I say strings will normally last well, from my experience as a tuner, I've been tuning since 1980, um, it's very, very rare that you get a broken string, but if you've already got a few, then uh, you may expect more to come later on. Um, though there's plenty of other videos we've got on, on, the, on the subject as well. But um, this one, it sounds very nice, but the problem is the tuning block, and this is a Model 3 Beckstein, an old Beckstein, um, so just briefly, because there is another video on this, that um, we have to change the tuning block, therefore we have to restring. Um, and uh, even though that's a larger tuning pin, it's still loose because the wood behind has dried out and it doesn't seem to respond to central heating very well. The old Beckstein's pre-1902, basically, the old one to five models. Six to ten, they seem to be much better. So um, there could be many reasons that you may have to restring, but um, if the strings are already good, the tuning block is good, uh, tuning pins are tight, the um, soundboard is, well, the, the, the down bearing on the soundboard is good, the tone in the middle is good, then you have to think carefully whether you're going to restring because you may not improve the piano. And strings, as I say, if, they, if the tuning pins are tight and if the, the, they are very good strings, then there's no, no reason why they shouldn't last 50, 100 years, and no problem at all. As a second postscript, I forgot to mention that the Amhars that uh, you'll find all over the UK for sale, 1970s, 80s, this is 1971, and got the original strings. If the tuning pins are tight again, the strings are good tone. We've tried changing Yamaha strings occasionally. If you put German ones on, they're slightly better in the bass, but then you've got to change the trebles to match. And really, this is such a nice sound. These 70s and 80s Yamahas are so good just beautifully and lush this the the the, the sound balls are so good on these pianos and the string quality is very very good and if the hammers are good and have not been used very much you get a wonderful tone out of them